This is a Mountain Breeze Ion Probe Ionizer, and it's basically a tubular ionizer that's designed to go into a standard British bayonet cap lamp holder, and it's got an ion ionizing needle in the tip. Now, I've had to actually partially disassemble that or this already because it was glued together, so I had to use the trusty vise to basically squeeze it round at both ends and um, crack the glue seals. But that has been done. I've also desoldered the connections at this end because um, it turns out that it comes out from the other end and uh, this end is slightly tapered in. I'm guessing that this is just a piece of standard plastic tube that they've tapered in somehow, I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, uh, this plastic disc at the end was recessed and this ionizer is quite interesting. It's got uh, the needle in a little socket, much like a turned pin um, IC socket. And I've used this approach myself um, on homemade ionizers where I've had the box and rather than, you know, um, try and recess the needles, the easiest way to mount it was to use a bit of... Um, one of these pins actually pushed out of a turned pin socket. You can press these out with a pair of pliers and then put through the plastic case and then a bit into a bit of vero board at the back. And they've done something very similar here. This basically means that you can change the needle if you wish. You just find a suitably thin needle um, and plug it into that uh, little socket. In fact, I'll leave that out before I stab myself with it. So, putting it out... The inside does have a little bit of circuit board material. I've just pulled that off, actually, off that resistor. And uh, that's what the socket there is actually soldered into, and then onto the um, ionizer output. It's got an E indicator at the output end as well, which is, yeah, I'm not overly keen on that, because you bring the low voltage end of the ionizer, the mains voltage end, down towards the same end as the needle, and that does potentially pose a risk of um, tracking across, although this is pretty well sleeved and insulated, so it shouldn't be that much of a, a problem. However, let's get this plastic sleeving off, and this is heat shrink sleeving, but it's a fairly shiny, hard, plasticky stuff. So let's get a knife, uh, see if I can find a sharp knife, if this isn't a sharp knife, not to worry. I can see already that there, it's a standard mountain breezy type capacitors. Oh, here's another thing. It's Mountain Breeze Iron Pro, but it's made in Britain by Sidha Technology Limited. S-I-D-H-A, Sidha. I'll lift that up so you can take a look at it. Because um, I guess that's the people who originally made these before it ended up under the Pifco brand. Maybe they are the Pifco brand, I don't really know. It's very hard to tell. So I'm going to start slitting this down. Not sure if there's components under here or not, but I'll find out when this is off. Nope, it's just the circuit board. And it's all been hand soldered, which it's a fairly specialised item, certainly from that era, so um, that wouldn't really surprise me. really crinkled up here. Let's see if I can cut that with a pair of snips without cutting any wires. Okay, so one notable feature that this has got that others don't have I'm going to remove this because it's actually quite noisy. It's making quite a lot of uh, skidding noises. There we go. It's got a 10k resistor in series with it. I wonder why that is. It may, may have been early one, early model. It's got the one, not one megohm, 10 megohm resistors in the output. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it's actually got one capacitive stage more than the normal um, 11 and 11 version of this. But other than that, the capacitors, and I've guessed the diodes are probably 1N4007. I can't actually see for sure because I'm looking for one that... Yes, it is. I can see the 7. I can see random numbers pointing up towards me. So they are 1N4007 1 1-amp 1,000-volt uh, rectifier diodes. And the capacitors are 10 nanofarad 630-volt. 
It's quite a neat, uh, as with all these ionizers, it tends to be a very symmetrical layout underneath, and it's, it's quite neat. These also look like hand-etched circuit boards. These don't look commercially manufactured. I don't know what the 12.9 stands for. Because this uh, must date back to 80s, 70s, not 100% sure. Yeah, that's interesting. It's, it's quite an interesting unit, I'm guessing. You know, I guess this must have been the er one of the earliest of their ionizers, if it was sort of made in sort of this plastic tube. The disc at the end was actually recessed down into the tube. It was maybe about five millimetres back, so the needle was recessed. That's quite interesting. It's the same neon holder they've used in their later versions. Or is it actually? Because the other ones, uh, I think the first ones that pushed through the front, the other ones laterally just had a wee uh, clip stuck in the other side of the, the hole. Hmm. Yeah, that's quite interesting. Fundamentally, just the usual multiplier um, circuit, and it is very much a quintessential mountain breeze ionizer. But um, this one is handmade. Now, I've just spotted something else there. Is that a break in the track? There's a break in the track. And they've tried soldering. I wonder why there's a weak break in the track. I don't think that's delivered. I think it's just a manufacturing defect. Oh. It was still ionising, but not very effectively. I think they've tried fixing I think this has been a handmade circuit board that they've um, tried fixing that by running soldier along there and it's not quite worked. Ooh, naughty, I'm going to check that out now. Yeah, that's a, a, that's a very interesting gadget. I wonder if that's going to prove its performance if I bridge across that. Interesting, I shall try that out.